Hello and welcome to 4550 RPM, Remembering Past Musos, celebrating the lives of past musos born in the 40s and 50s. I'm your host GK, yes that's a pseudonym, and to understand what this show is about, go to our introduction episode for an overview. This is episode one and we're going to offer a brief overview of the life of guitarist Paul Kossoff, whose light shone brightly for an oh-so-short amount of time before he died under tragic circumstances. Born on the 14th of September 1950 in Hampstead, London, Paul Kossoff began taking classical guitar lessons at age nine. He wasn't a huge fan of school, but he clearly had some mad skills on the fretboard. Not long after going to his first concert at age eight, his parents bought him his first guitar and he took classical lessons from then until he was 15. By the age of 17, in 1967, Kossoff joined a band called Black Cat Bones. Black Cat Bones had opened for Fleetwood Mac, but Kossoff is most widely known for his time with Free, a group that had the best voice, one of the best bass players, one of the hardest working drummers, and with Kossoff, arguably one of the best guitarists on the planet. The Free catalogue holds some of the best blues rock albums of the 60s and 70s and are best known for their classic rock staple, All Right Now, and the often covered Wishing Well. After Free, Paul released his first solo album, Backstreet Crawler, with the assistance of all the members of Free, Alan White from Yes, and a host of other musos. Then, in 1975, after his solo outing, he formed the group called Backstreet Crawler, and they went on to release two albums. Paul is widely recognised for his distinctive blues rock vibrato. Indeed, many have adopted his style, some during and many after his death. Paul's guitar of choice was the Gibson Les Paul for most of his career, and he was one of the musos responsible for the spike in popularity of that guitar in the years following his death. He owned a number of Les Pauls in his life, and there are quite a few stories to be told about Koss's guitars, but it's worth noting just two here briefly. Be aware that when it comes to tracing the history of specific instruments, there can at times be some confusion. For instance, this story here has been the source of some confusion over the years, so I plan to keep it as simple as I can, because I don't want to add to the confusion, and I recommend you do some further research for yourself. Okay, so sometime during July slash August 1969, Paul Kossoff and Eric Clapton swapped guitars. This apparently happened during the Blind Faith North American tour when Free and Delaney and Bonnie opened for Blind Faith. Koss gave Clapton his Les Paul Custom in exchange for Clapton's Les Paul Dark Burst. Paul used this guitar right up to his death and it then went to a guitar collector and passed through a couple of hands before it wound up in the hands of fellow Free Band member Paul Rogers. Rogers owned it for a while before it was again sold with the proceeds of that sale going to the Paul Kossoff Foundation. Another guitar that has now moved into legendary status is Paul's 59 Gibson Les Paul Standard Burst. As the story goes, he broke this guitar during a concert at the Mayfair Ballroom in October 1972 and he needed a guitar to finish the show. He borrowed Arthur Ram's guitar of the band Beckett to complete the set Later, he approached Arthur and asked if he would like to swap his 68 Les Paul gold top for Paul's broken LP standard. But what happened was, Arthur took Paul's 58 blonde Les Paul, that's the famous one he used at the Isle of Wight concert. Arthur says he had this one for a year, and then Kossoff contacted him and asked if they could swap back, which they did, apparently after it had been repaired. The neck from the fifth fret and headstock were replaced, accounting for the lack of a serial number, and after the repair, Kossoff decided to keep it. A few years later, after the death of Kossoff, Ram contacted Paul's girlfriend to inquire about the burst. So then, following that, Kossoff's father was then consulted, and he said he wanted the guitar to go to someone that would play it. So that's how Arthur ended up with it in the long run. Is that all clear? I tell you, it took me a lot of digging to get to that point, and it's essentially the one as told by Arthur Ram himself on video, which is why I chose to go with it. He was there. 
Anyway, eventually the guitar changed hands again and found a new home, but the new owner didn't hide it away. He allowed former Freed Band members Paul Rogers and Simon Kirk to be reunited with the old acts in 2019. And there's footage of that on and photos of that on the internet. You can go and look at that. Gibson also honoured Paul Kossoff's memory and this guitar with a limited edition version. Now, I'm reading from the Legacy Gibson website here. Quote, Now, in cooperation with the Kossoff estate, Gibson Custom has gained access to this incredible Les Paul in order to painstakingly recreate it in strictly limited numbers. Digitally scanned, measured and tested in England by Gibson Custom, this rare piece of musical history has been documented in intimate detail in order to recreate as closely as possible the tone, look and feel of the guitar in its current condition, as Paul left it when he passed away. The result, presented by Gibson Custom in the form of the Paul Kossoff 1959 Les Paul Standard, will be reproduced as just 100 hand-aged guitars and a further 250 guitars treated with Gibson's proprietary VOS process, unquote. Now, there are a number of YouTube videos regarding this guitar and its later life, so I suggest you go and have a look, especially the Arthur Ram Paul Kossoff Les Paul Burst Next Story video. Now moving on from guitars, it's widely acknowledged that Kossoff had a problem with drugs. And as his father said, quote, he had a taste for dangerous pursuits, the risky rather than the peaceful, unquote. This risky lifestyle certainly led to his death. In 1973, Free had disbanded, sending Kossoff in a downward spiral. As we said earlier, in 75, he formed the band Backstreet Crawler. But in March 1976, at the age of 25, he died from what's believed to have been a drug-related heart attack whilst on board a flight from Los Angeles to New York. Ultimately, Paul Kossoff will best be remembered for his playing in Free. They influenced many great bands and guitarists and will always have a place in the record collections of blues rock lovers or anyone who loves good music. Paul's ethos was simple. Quote, the music should come from the soul and be simple and straightforward so everyone can enjoy it. And this is why we're going down well. Unquote. Kossoff was only with us for a short time. But for those of us who love their searing guitar solos played with passion, he won't soon be forgotten. On a personal note, I have long been a huge fan of Free and Paul Kossoff. One of their better known songs, Wishing Well, was apparently about the band's close friend Bevan Woodhouse but it could just as easily have been about Kossoff himself. The covers band I was in played a couple of free songs, including Wishing Well, and I always assumed it was about Kossoff. Another tune by Free that I also assumed was about Kossoff is My Brother Jake. Of course, I was into these songs way before the internet, so if you listen to the lyrics and know a little of their history, it's not too long a bow to be drawn. The other thing of personal note is that the closest I will ever come to own anything like Kossoff's legendary 59 Les Paul is my handmade miniature replica, which you can see here. That's if you're watching this on video. Okay, well that's it for 45 RPM, the Paul Kossoff episode, episode 1. 45 RPM is brought to you by Philosopher Rock. Remember to like and subscribe us on YouTube. And if you want to reach us, you can email us at philosopherrock at gmail.com. That's philosopherrock at gmail.com. Check back soon for more episodes. So until then, this has been your host, GK. Cheers and take care of yourself. Mm-hmm.